Did we? Constato. So today, this is the uh, cap, by the way, from the last video that I made. As you see, it's filling out nice. I did a couple little modifications to it, but we won't get into that right now. Today, as you can probably see by the title, and um, so, sorry if I'm a little nervous. My hands are actually shaking a little bit. So again, today, it's brought to you by Tuconnell. Reason for this video in the middle of the day, and I'm feeling a little bit rushed on it, but that's okay, is I just got a call from one of the volunteers for the Knoxville Irish Society. Um, it's run by a gentleman named Chris, and Lauren is one of the primary volunteers. Lauren gave me a call today. Uh, we got short notice last night. Uh, Chris informed her that the Irish consulate is actually coming to visit Knoxville and is going to have dinner with the local Hurley Club and with Chris and Lauren from the society, which is great. I mean, that's a, it's amazing. It's good exposure for us. Um, it may be a good contact for us for back home. Um, back home being Ireland is, you know. Anyways, so I'm a little nervous because she called me up and asked her because I do a lot of wood carving and a lot of other things. Is there anything I could possibly donate or gift to them? Because we are giving them some gifts. And unfortunately, I don't have any woodcraft right now or anything that's like uh, Celtic knotwork and carving. It just takes too long to do it. I only have about two hours. So I just happen to have a hat material made for uh, Ivy style, which this is the eight panel that we talked about before. The Ivy style is more the uh, what you might think of in the store-bought flat caps where it's just one piece on top. Uh, so I'm going to go over that today and how to make one. And we're going to make one, and it's going to be gifted to the Irish consulate. Hopefully it fits them. Or her. I don't know exactly who it is right now. Um, but we're going to go over that. You got to calm the nerves a little bit somehow. A little excited. So, again, leather lining for the peak. Now, the peak on these is quite a bit wider, as you see. And uh, there's quite a few fewer pieces in these, too. You got your two pieces for your peak, of course, with your leather lining. You have these two pieces that are known as the bevel. And then of course the top of the hat. That's the flat top, the one piece. These are kind of the backs. I'll use this partially done one as an example. As you see, the bevels are underneath. Now this is where on a snap brim one where you put the snap and it would hold it down. Um, now again, I'm gonna make this so you all can see it, but there's gonna be some parts that we're just gonna skip. So for brevity's sake that I'll have to do off off camera and that includes in particular sewing completely around because you go all the way around the peak and you sew it down to give that that flat look. Uh, this is uh, made of a suiting, it's real light, um, but uh, this is just kind of an example piece. Now there's a couple variations of even this style as well, or actually quite a few out there, but the two primary differences are actually in where the bevel meets the back. You see on this one it's rounded. Yeah. Rounded ones are less material, or excuse me, uh, but a uh, little bit more flair to them on the sides, they stick out a little bit more. The 90 degree ones are actually a little bit more material, but the way that the top is cut, it actually pulls it in tighter to the head. And so again, you know, if the pattern, the pattern's available, I'll have mine here with me right now. Um, but, uh, you know, they are available online, or if you contact me, I can send you a copy of one. And uh, you can use that to make it, and you can modify it any way you want. Just like the eight panels, you do it how you want. So let's go ahead and get started on this. Of course, first thing I want to do is I want to sew up the peak. So uh, this one, I'm going to be a little bit slower on some aspects of it. I am actually going to pin everything together. Normally, you don't see me do that. I just kind of run it. Um, the Ivy style is a little more precise in its make than an eight panel. An eight panel is definitely a poor man's working class cap. The Ivy is a little bit uh, classier, if you will. And uh, it's just gonna take a little bit more precision on it. And I want this to come out just right, especially for who this is gonna end up going to. This is a big, big deal um, for both the Irish Society here in Knoxville and uh, for me personally as a craftsman, um, to be able to gift this to someone like that, a uh, really big deal. Um, the irony, the timing is just insane um, because, you know, I mean, we just had St. Patrick's Day and, 
you know, I, I was really regretting this injury uh, that I had, my knee injury, because I wasn't able, I really wanted to go to New York. Jerry Adams was speaking there a long time and recently, um, I guess retired. He stepped down basically as president of Sinn Féin. He was speaking there as was uh, Mary Lou McDonald. And I can't remember the lady's first name, but her last name is O'Neill. I know that she's the vice president. So uh, Mary Lou's the new president of Sinn Féin. Um, but they were all speaking in New York on St. Patrick's Day. How cool is that? Um, but I did mention that they should come to Knoxville and now the consulate's coming here. So that's pretty cool. Kind of excited about that. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get this one going. Let's see how we can do this here. So basically same thing, quarter inch seam all the way around. Um, I'm gonna keep the threads on this one a little tight. And we'll start it by hand a little bit. Okay, again, I'm doing this left footed, which is not normal for me. Um, still nursing this knee injury. For those of you who don't know, I'm in East Tennessee and it's starting to be allergy season here. They're starting to work on the lawn, so I might be a little sniffly. But that's okay. Now, I don't often make these style of caps. These are by far the most popular style of flat cap out there. There's my scissors. Um, I think it's because they're easier to make, they're faster to make. So production-wise, when you're talking about companies who produce hats, this is what they make, not the eight panels, not by far. It's just not as popular a thing. Okay, so got our peak. Garbage bag as always. And uh, again, I, I don't think I'm going to iron these ones. I don't want the edges to be too sharp. I, you know, when you don't iron them, iron them, um, they stay a little bulky and a little more pronounced. It just gives it a fuller feel to it. Um, one little thing I didn't, I don't think I mentioned was when you do turn them inside out, you get these little triangles, clip those off. You don't need that. It's just extra material, gets in the way. It's a little annoying. So just don't clip your stitch. So now we got the peak basically made. We're gonna stick, and again, sometimes one piece will be slightly smaller than the other. You kind of want that to be the downside piece. So you're gonna do like so. Insert your leather. You need to, you can clip the corners on the leather as well. Um, it seems big, you know, cut it to meet the pattern. So <clears throat> what I tend to do is I tend to get the overlay on one side of the leather always just uh, helps keep a nice even looking form this one is going to be a little bit of a pain but we got it And actually, our leather is a little too, maybe a little too big. We want to bring that back just a tiny, tiny bit. So we're actually going to take almost a quarter off of this, which happens, you know. And what I did to actually cut the leather out initially was I just laid one of the pattern pieces on a piece of leather, traced it around it, and then cut off a quarter off the front and a half inch off the back. And obviously, in this case, it just wasn't enough. Not a big deal. It's leather. I cut it down. I also got more of it in case I screw it up, but it is what it is. And normally what you would actually do is once you get this in there, you do a bass stitch or base stitch, whatever you want to call it, um, to hold it in place. But we're just going to pin it so we can uh, kind of seal it in there, so to speak. We're not having a good time with this one today. So, there we go.
So again, just kind of pinning it in there to uh, hold it in place for now. And uh, as I go, I'll remove these pins as I'm sewing it up. So. And you can't really see through the fabric, so you just got to kind of best guess it. And actually where I have the pins, locating it pretty well. So I can just kind of drive towards where the pin was. And that will give us nice tight fitting. These peaks are not as long as uh, my eight panels. They're very, I don't know if you can see with the backlighting, but they are shorter from front to back. So um, I'm not actually gonna put that normal center piece down that I would. I want it to have a fuller kind of effect, but because it's not as tall, it doesn't tent as much across the middle. Remember how we put that extra seam right in the middle or a stitch right in the middle. We're not going to do that this time. One thing we are going to do, it's a little bit different though. I don't often do this on the eight panels because they're also narrower, is this one is long. So we need to cut it so we can actually fold this up. We need to just notch it in a couple places. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And you just don't cut all the way to your stitch. I mean, you can do it as many times as you want. This one, that three will work on that, I think. I think that'll be just fine. So there's a peak. Peak is done. Now, we will do the bevel. The bevel, we take in this particular pattern, again, we have that round top that goes up here instead of a 90 degree. So we have the round. So you take the two square edges, put them together, and you sew those. And that's the front. That's what's going to be right in the center underneath uh, the top, the flat top, right above the peak. And again, all these are quarter inch seams on everything. Unless some special requires otherwise. Uh oh, we got a problem. That's going to work. There we go. It's got a little caught. Trying to keep this thing on three, two millimeter. Come on. Not really a problem. We are running low on thread, but uh, in particular, the problem now is our bobbin is out. So that is okay. We will get that filled here. This is an old machine. We're actually going to use this off of here because we need more thread on here. We are running low. And this is a very old machine. Uh, it was gifted to me. And uh, I love this thing, but it can be a bit of a pain to uh, run it. Remember how to uh, actually do this. Definitely not like mom's machine back home. My mom sits quite often. And uh, she has some very nice machines. She has two. And she has an old singer just like this as well that she doesn't use any longer. But uh, I'll definitely tell you that the new machines are much, much easier to set up than this. And we'll see if I get it right on the first try. If not, we might have to bust out the book. No, probably not. It's just like a million little things that you gotta thread it through before you even get to the eye of the needle.
So today we're not just teaching you how to make a flat cap of a certain style, we're also teaching you how to run a Singer 401 Monza. Exciting as that. Probably not terribly, but still pretty cool. And this is where my machine actually has a little bit of an issue. We're gonna throw the bobbin on here and uh, thread it up. But it does actually have a bit of an issue in that it sometimes will lock up in the middle of you trying to wind the bobbin and get uh, not mm -hmm. careful, it'll kind of throw some wrench into your works. And if you're really not careful, it'll kind of screw up the finger. <laughs> Okay. I'm not doing it manually because it doesn't uh, do it quite well here. You probably put all that shit on there. And that's what I mean, it runs away. All right, we're good. We got more than enough thread to at least finish this. Should anyway, should it? Because it's, I mean, it's a, it's an Ivy. It's not a, you know, if it had been an eight panel, well, I still wouldn't worry, but it's all right. So that should be it, hopefully. No, we might have a problem. That's good. All right, so here we are. This is our bevel. That's what's gonna sit under the fold and on top of the peak under here. Okay, so now we simply just attach the bevel to the top of the hat, and that's it. Um, this particular hat, again, is just a, this is just a flannel. And uh, I mean, it's available at most fabric stores. This is the hardest part is making sure you get it right. Because you want it to, that's, that's the bone right there. Okay. You'll see me sometimes do that, especially when doing linings. You always want to make sure you're sewing them to the right side and the right way in or out. That way, when you turn something inside out, it comes out correctly. Sometimes that can be a little bit of a pain to do. Um, now, this has, of course, a curve to it. So this is going to be a little bit tougher than normal to actually sew up. We're actually not going to use pins on this. I'm not feeling comfortable with that. Just doesn't feel like it's going to work right for me. So I feel like I can do a little bit better freehand, so we're going to go ahead and freehand it. How you do a curve, just sew it in little bits that seem straight. Yeah. Only go so far as you can see it. Then you can move it over. And you just make sure when it bunches like that that you don't uh, sew through a, a a fold of some sort, and otherwise you get a weird, weird texture to the exterior of the hat. Yeah. 
This is the only downside to freehanding it. it. Can't take a little bit of time. But I'd rather have this turn out right. Because this is, again, this is going to someone who is fairly important. Now, when you come to this uh, center seam here, kind of want to flatten it out if you can really see that. You don't want it laying off to one side or the other. You kind of want to butterfly it out and flatten it. Um, and you'll sew it down, of course. So when you do that. So again, we're just gonna go nice and slow, slower than I'd like, but I want it to turn out right. And speed up on some parts just because they tend to be a little straighter. It's all good. Let's see how this Something's going on. I'm just jamming up a little bit. This machine's very old and it's a little temperamental, so sometimes it does that, especially if you're trying to sew through leather. Oh boy, I'll tell you what, it can be a bitch. <laughs> That's not good. This machine is not cutting it. It's up here. We may have an issue with the machine now, which is not good. We are under a bit of a time crunch. So let's try and run that one again. Yeah, we're bunched up there. It started having an issue. So what we're going to do is we're just going to stitch over the existing stitch and seam and uh, make it work. It'll kind of lock it in there. So we're going to go back quite a ways, actually. Let me try that again. Uh -oh. Yep, we're having a problem here. So we will get it fixed. We will get it sorted. So we don't have time. <laughs> so 
honestly acting almost how it does when you try and sew leather, which is kind of scary. <laughs> There we go. So there we go. That's how basics of it. And then again, you have the back that we got to sew up here. Let's this excess thread off. And we'll do the lining. Right now is how we get to test fit it, though. Now, I don't know the size of this man's head, so I'm just going to make it a little bit loose for me. Who knows? And if it's a little bit tight for him, it'll just sit high on his head. That's all there is to it. So hopefully... Uh, See if he's a Kennedy. That'd be nice. I'll make it big. <laughs> just kidding. I'm just kidding. Kennedys are all right. Good friend of mine. She's actually descended from the Kennedys. She does have a big head, though. <laughs> just make sure you don't hit yourself with the needles. And let's see how we're going to... Sit. Right now, I'm just looking for the fit, the overall fit. Of, see, as you can see, this is even with the peak on it, and you see exactly how it's going to sit and fit. So that's going to work right there, I think. I think that'll be all right. We'll just do a small quarter inch seam and keep it nice and tight. That should be it. We'll sew it from the outside edge. Again, you know, kind of rushing. One of the volunteers will be over here pretty damn soon to pick this up. So I want to get it done. Mm -hmm. so just feeding down into it and it's stuck. Again, you want to watch, just make sure it doesn't bundle up and fold. Over the Cover the best, so you get weird folds on the outside. And make sure you always run those lock stitches. Keep everything together nice and tight. Okay. So we're getting there. We are getting there. It's a little bit long on Came down a little bit long here, which is fine. We'll just cut it to flush. So I can do that so that way we make sure it's at least even when we go to stitch that bottom seam. All right, so I put my hat back on. Look the peak. And uh, I don't have a pencil over here, so we will also mark the center of the peak. Um, can be accomplished by folding it in half, giving it a little set. That's all that's needed. Just line it up and pin it in place. And again, kind of butterfly out that stitch if you're not ironing it. Get it to the middle there. And then come on over here. And just stitch her up. To do something too quick. Um, you just go back and you rip the seams, then you start where it wasn't going through the body, and it essentially creates a lock stitch there.
Just like that. Now we're getting there. Now we are getting there. So that's the body of the hat. That's it. That's kind of it. Now we just got to do the lining. Um, let's test fit this one one more time. See how it fits. And again, this will be brought all the way forward and sewn down around the edge of the peak. So this hat will sit up. This isn't like an eight panel. It doesn't sit as high. It doesn't sit as deep on your head. So and it looks kind of funny right now because it's not all secure. But this is about where it'll be. It'll sit up high. It doesn't go very, very far down. This is folded in. It sits just kind of like that. That's, a, that's an ivy. Yeah. Um, I don't know exactly why they're called ivies. Um, to me, that's what I call them. I think it's because of the, those types of caps versus an eight panel to me are often associated with uh, upper class. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing here, especially in the U.S., is I, Ivy League. Now, this one, what you want to do for your lining is you actually kind of want to look at that back seam, that corner seam, and you want it to be about as tall as that seam, plus like a half an inch. So, actually, on this particular one, it's got a fold in it that works right about perfect for it. So, we'll go ahead and cut that. That is going to be the crown of our... Um, lining. And this is just cotton, essentially handkerchiefs that I buy. Um, and that's what I use as lining on all my hats. Cotton is nice, it's breathable, you know, works really, really well. It's just comfortable. It doesn't make your head itch or anything like that. So the only downside is these aren't, they just don't come all the way around your head. So you usually got to cut off an extra piece about the same width which is fine, comes out just fine. And you can split the difference on them and make them go around evenly or not. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, it all just kind of depends. But you do ideally want your seams symmetrical. So one at the front, one at the back or one at each side, or um, sometimes you have your seams running at both sides of the peak like what would be right here, essentially. That's another way to do it. Doesn't really matter. Again, like I always say, it's your hat. You do how you want, however you like it. And especially on the lining, it's not seen by anybody but you. Nobody cares. Even if you show it to someone, it doesn't really matter. You know, it's a lining. It's just there to... on this thing shot up when I re threaded it. Well, that's actually okay, never mind. And on this particular one, I'm just lining up the back seam of the body of the hat with the seam of the uh, lining. And that's all I'm doing here. Better fly them both out. We'll lock stitch it down. And this is where you're going to determine how tall of uh, the back of the hat's really going to be. I kind of want this one to be a little bit shorter. So we might go a half inch, maybe not quite a half, pretty close. Yeah, that's I got patterns and pieces of fabric everywhere. That's just normal. You know, what to do. That's no joke. When you start doing a lot of sewing, it, it is a mess. Um, 
for me anyway. I don't understand how people can keep their stuff organized. I've never been good at it. So of course you want to go to the inside of the peak. So when you hit the leather, sometimes that's going to cause a problem, but you find ways around it. There's a way. It's all the ways away. So we're just going to come to the center. And we're going to create a center seam up the front as well. And you just leave that on there until you're ready. Again, just meet these up at the front, put them together. I want to do them at exactly 90. I'm kind of lean forward a little bit. It doesn't really matter though, I guess. I actually want to stitch those up. Lining, so long as it's fairly loose inside the hat, it's not going to really matter what it does, how it looks, how it's sewn up. It doesn't have to be precise. Um, it can actually help give body to the hat, depending on how loose it is. So I'm going to cut off this excess. I'll just give it a go and see how it looks. So I got the fold over. Again, there it is, just like that. Yeah, uh, that'll, of course, you're going to run your small seam around the edge, and that'll hold the lining in. And we can do that right now. Because otherwise, it just falls out. I mean, you can iron it down as well, that'll help. But, uh, Actually, start this one. Start out at this corner here. Starting at those corners, a little bit easier.
Now, normally these hats, I mean, you know, they don't take a terribly long time to actually sew up, but there's a lot more that goes into them than just the sewing. You know, all my patterns are hand cut. All the pieces are hand cut. I put leather in it. I don't put cardboard or plastic, you know. Um, there's a reason that I use leather on my hats, on my personal hats and on the hats that I make for other people. And, uh, you know, it's part of its quality, part of its longevity, um, flexibility, but durability in that aspect too. You know, you have a piece of cardboard in here and you fold it and you stick it in your pocket, it's going to stay creased. This doesn't. It can spring right back. And leather is nice that if you wet it, you can mold it to any shape you want. Let it dry. You know. And there's a lot that goes into these beyond just the making of the hat. There's a design and thought that goes into it too. So my hats, if you've been to my website um, or my Instagram, you know my hats are about $75. They're not cheap. You know, this isn't a Kangle hat. It's not a cheap piece of shit. It's not manufactured in China. And yes, I will call other companies on that kind of bullshit. You know, you want to call it handmade. Well, mine are handmade. You see me do it. Um, this hat here, this I mean, this is a $75 hat that's going for free. I've made hats for friends of mine for free. But this is a, you know, I mean, this one's pretty special, like who it's going to um, and what it means for our uh, organization here in Knoxville. So, seventy-five dollar hat. It's a potential sale. I'm giving away. Uh, means a lot, though. Means a lot. And that's where we're going to <laughs> just soak through the body of it. Yeah, we did a lot, actually. If you'll get enough over there. That's okay. Yeah, we can fix that. Sort of. Yeah, I realized that too late. Still a little nervous if you can't tell. So. Just do, just cut, pull it apart, pull those threads out eventually, don't worry. Go back to where it was still good, which is right about there. stitch you'll kind of create a box, which is good. And I was sewing over the body that has it. And how funny that I talk about that and I do it. Brilliant. I, that was scripted. I meant to do that. That's all. That's all that. You can't tell I'm a little nervous. I think I need another drink is what it is. We're almost out of Turcano. Our sponsor's going to change either Hellcat, Maggie, or Quebec. I'm going to... Uh, meet up with the Hurley team because after Tuesday is the Hurley team's practice and they meet at Clancy's, which is an Irish pub here in Knoxville. It's like our only Irish pub. It's not the best Irish pub I've ever been in. Kells in Seattle still takes that, but it's all right. Um, last time I was in there though, they didn't have any turco. I'll fucking shame them.
just to give you an idea, we'll go ahead and pin this down so you can see what it's going to look like overall. Now, one of the names that a lot of people give these is English driver's caps. I don't call them that because I don't drive the fucking English around. Not my problem. They hire their own people to drive them. Anyways, um, just like my dad. Um, this is what, the Ivy style is what I would associate more with like an English driver's cap, honestly. I think that's kind of why I call it an Ivy cap. And I mean, that's a very popular name for it, but it definitely is what it feels like to me. So. Uh, it's of course you know it's pinned down so it's going to stick up but you also see what kind of flares on the side but you get this one piece flat top that's pretty good actually that's coming out all right i like it i like it maybe i won't give it to him maybe i'll just keep it Ooh, pound sand no i'm just kidding this uh this is definitely for the consulate but i do like it that much and i don't even like the one piece ivy style hats that's not my thing i'm all about that eight piece baby you know, I am actually going to run a stitch around here to hold that down. It just folds back and rolls back too much. I don't like that. So we're going to go ahead and run a quick stitch in there through the leather. It's an easy, easy, easy fix. Um, not a big deal. God, using this left-handed is actually kind of scary. Or left-footed, I should say. driving a car if you drive a stick and you try and use your left foot for braking no matter how careful you are you slam on that damn pedal it fucking happens it's kind of the same thing here i'm so used to using my right foot i've always used my right foot for sewing machines my whole life ever since i was about eight nine years old when i first used one so using my left foot all of a sudden is a little terrifying and i've caught my thumb in the tightener for the needle the retention screw crushed it under that a couple times at this. Luckily, I haven't put a needle through a finger. I've never done it. Hopefully, it'll never happen. I'll say that about sewing the body of the hat when I did it. God, I'm probably going to do it now. Who knows? We'll try not to. Is there enough pain? Probably don't need any more. I'm all right. So we'll uh, cut these threads off flush, make it look nice and clean. Actually, that looks really damn good. I like that. I like the way it's holding now. It's not moving at all. Yeah, should have done that just at the outset. Okay, yeah. But like I said, I'm going to skip that part so you don't get to see that. Because it just takes time. I don't have that kind of time to talk about it. Now, for the top of the lining, Basically, all you need to do is cut a piece that's round about the size of this and stitch it in, and that's all you got to do. I mean, it's that simple. And it creates a little crown inside. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do that, I think. I'm going to watch this in as well. We're only at about 49 minutes. Last time it took an hour. Um, we didn't have to stop for bobbin winding last time, though. So about up there. Um, and we'll just clip the corners off. Doesn't have to be perfectly round. Doesn't even have to be perfectly sized because what we're going to do, just like the eight panel, is we're actually going to bunch it up a little bit in the front. Now, have two things. Remember, I don't sew. I don't sew a little pocket closed, so I can turn the hat inside out. And I don't even bother sewing it up afterwards because it doesn't need it. It's never seen. It's tucked in. Doesn't has no effect on it, so it doesn't really matter. And another part of that is if you have to take the hat apart or work on it, you can. But essentially, this is going to be, this is more inches around than the inside of this here. So you're going to have an open pocket here. And that's the whole idea. So we'll start it there. 
we go which side like that, which side like that. So we want that. Excited for Chris and Lauren, actually. It's pretty cool that they get to meet the Irish consulate. How fucking awesome is that? That's a big, big deal. I'm very, very happy. Of course, I wish it could be me, but it is what it is. That's what happens when you join someone else's organization. You don't start it yourself. You know? so that's all right. But of course, I planted that seed. I let Lauren, Lauren know if they need it or if she wants to meet other people or if they need other people, just give us a call. We'll be down there in a heartbeat. Gladly come down. I can always use a good pint. Actually, that's not true. I can always use good whiskey. Speaking of which, Clancy's is all out of Turconnell, and I am almost too. Lauren's a very nice gal. I showed her some of my. Uh, Celtic tattoos and stuff and how I hand poke them and because hand poke doesn't always come out perfectly nice um, you can always touch it up and go over it later but I don't do that because I like the I like the kind of distressed look of it the way it turns out when I do it she loved it and she wants me to do her own a neck piece a Celtic neck piece that should be pretty fucking cool but we'll see I should trade her. I should tell her I'll do the tattoo for free if I get to meet the consulate. No, I'm kidding. Kidding, kidding, kidding. Sort of, but not really. Oh, yes. Towards the needle. Oh, yeah. Council town for. Okay, so again, now we have this big pocket in the front, and that's going to serve two purposes. For one, I can turn the hat inside out very easily. For two, that's actually going to kind of tuck up above the bevel, so you won't even see it. That'll help give the hat a little bit of body up top. Just like that. Hey, you wear it like that. You look like a train conductor. Oh, don't do that. Don't ever do that, please. By the way, if you ever buy a snap brim hat, don't unsnap it. Keep it fucking snapped down. It looks stupid. Now, ladies, ladies have a slightly different style of hat uh, that is basically a newsboy that's un unfastened. That looks like this. It's big though. It's voluminous. That's fine. But guys, it's a flat cap. Put the fucking put the fucking bevel down. Don't unsnap it and have it standing. So let's get a little bit of pins in this one. Let me just show you what it's going to look like overall once it's done. It is almost there. You're right there. This is, I'm excited, man. This is so cool. Can't even explain to you how excited I am about this. Like, fuck, man. For both the Irish Society here in Knoxville and for myself to be able to do this. I mean, this is just something else. Now, how you do this, you don't just push it forward and sew down the bevel. Actually bring this front seam, so you kind of fold it under and tuck it and bring the front seam. And you're going to sew that all along the front. That's how you do that. It's really hard to mimic with just pins um kind of do it we'll see how close i can get that one did not hold at all <laughs> i 
Almost there, almost there. We're going to get this done before Lauren gets here to pick it up. Oh, yeah, we will. That's another thing is when you do sew this down to the peak, there is no real way to do this on a machine. Um, that's got to be 100% hand stitched. And, uh, you know, that's part of it, too, though, is just the spirit of these hats is that you got to, you know, they are handmade. They are handmade from top to bottom. Yes, you use a sewing machine. Okay, fine. It's a machine. But you're still using your hands to make it. It's just a faster way of doing it. God damn. That didn't work. Yeah, these pins aren't very strong. They're not very stiff. I think I was probably going to break, but that's okay. Ooh, hey, it almost looks like a golfing cap. Yeah, the pins are kind of in the wrong place. But anyways, you can kind of see this is that style. The light is really bad, so it makes it look like shit. But it's that one-piece flat cap with pins sticking out. Hopefully, I'll catch myself in the eye. And see, I sewed up a little bit taller in the back. So it's kind of sitting. This will fit, you know, this is a good hat to wear. Cockeyed maybe. But it works. And again, this will smooth out when I hand sew it. So it's just pinned in place. It's kind of shitty that you do have to do it that way. Um, they never look right. Never know until you sew it. So that's the one panel, the top panel ivy. One panel ivy, whatever you want to call it. I call it an ivy cap. It's a little bit different, and uh, I'm not personally the biggest fan of these. The first flat cap I ever owned was a one piece or was a ivy style cap. Um, I don't have it anymore. I'm pretty sure my ex stole it when we split up, but you know, whatever. Um, once I started making my own, though, eight panels are my favorites. I just like the fullness of the hat. It's just my style. Works really well. But, you know, I said we didn't have time earlier. Like I said, this is the hat that I made on the last video. And as you see, it came out pretty damn good. Did something a little bit different. Instead of sewing it in three places, I only did two. It actually gives a little bit more body to it when you uh, stand it up in the front there. You know, just a nice little hat. And it's warm. It's nice and warm. It's full and warm. It feels good. And it's a classic heavy tweed. I like it. But... Today, though, our focus, Irish Consulate hat. Really, really excited for the Knoxville Irish Society. Really honored to be a part of it. Um, really honored to uh, be able to make this item for the Irish Consulate. Um, hopefully he likes it or she. Again, I don't know who it is. I can't remember. I'm sorry. Um, but I'll find out, you know, at some point in time. <laughs> um, but I'm really, really excited. It's a really big thing, really big opportunity uh, for the Irish Society. So, yeah, I'm just really excited all around. But, yeah, that's it. I think that's it. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think that's it. But, yeah, this will be done here in a few minutes, and in about an hour, Lauren will be here to pick it up. Um, so, Gaurav, thank you very much. We'll see you all again later.